Hi everyone. Hi again. We thought to do a detour into a later publication because in Ray Franz's analysis of the way the Watchtower uses argumentation and manipulation, he uses the example of their treatment of the 2300 days in Daniel chapter 8. So we thought to show you what the Watchtower has done with this in the generation since Ray Franz was in his heyday in the 1950s and 60s. His quote was from the Your Will Be Done book, which was the commentary on the official interpretation of Daniel back in the 50s and 60s. And when I became a witness in 1970, this was gospel as far as I was concerned. This was the official interpretation of when God had brought the holy place into its right condition. Well, in this book, published since we left, 1999, pay attention to Daniel's prophecy, we have another interpretation of the 2300 days of Daniel. And so we'll read it for you. But let's look at the text, uh, Daniel 8, 13 and 14. And I got to hear a certain holy one speaking. And another holy one proceeded to say to the particular one who was speaking, How long will the vision be of the constant feature and of the transgression causing desolation, to make both the holy place and the army things to trample on. So he said to me, Until two thousand three hundred evenings and mornings, and the holy place will certainly be brought into its right condition. So we're looking at page 177 of this Daniel commentary, which, by the way, has now been deleted, apparently. Under the subhead, Holy Place Brought Into Right Condition, they start this way. No one can stand up against the Prince of Princes, not even a king as fierce in countenance as the Anglo-American world power. This king's attempts to desolate God's sanctuary do not succeed. After a period of 2,300 evenings and mornings, says the angelic messenger, the Holy Place will certainly be brought into its right condition, or shall emerge victorious. The 2300 days constitute a prophetic period. Hence, a prophetic year of 360 days is involved. This 2300 days, then, would amount to six years, four months, and 20 days. When was this period? Well, in the 1930s, God's people began to experience increasing persecution in various countries. And during World War II, Jehovah's Witnesses were fiercely persecuted in the lands of the Anglo-American dual world power. Why? Because of their insistence on obeying God as a ruler rather than men. Therefore, the 2300 days must be associated with that war. But what can be said about the beginning and the end of this prophetic period? For the holy place to be brought or restored to what it should be, the 2300 days must have begun when it previously was in the right condition from God's standpoint. At the earliest, this was on June 1, 1938, when the Watchtower published Part 1 of the article Organization. Part 2 appeared in the issue of June 15, 1938. Counting 2,300 days, that is six years, four months, and 20 days, on the Hebrew calendar from June 1 or June 15, 1938, brings us to October 8th or October 22nd, 1944. On the first day of a special assembly held at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA, on September 30th and October 1, 1944, the Watchtower Society's president spoke on the subject, the theocratic alignment today. At the annual corporate meeting on October 2nd, the Society's charter was amended in an effort to bring it as close to a theocratic arrangement as the law would allow. With the publication of clarified biblical requirements, theocratic organization was soon more fully installed in the congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses. While the 2300 days ran their course during World War II, which began in 1939, the offering of the constant feature at God's sanctuary was severely restricted because of persecution. 
1938, the Watchtower Society had 39 branches supervising the work of the witnesses worldwide, but by 1943 there were only 21. Increases in the number of kingdom publishers or proclaimers were also small during that period. As we have noted, during the closing months of World War II, Jehovah's Witnesses reaffirmed their determination to magnify God's rulership by serving Him as a theocratic organization. It was with this objective that the rearrangements of their work and governing structure was <coughs> initiated in 1944. In fact, the Watchtower of October 15, 1944, contained an article entitled, Organized for Final Work. It and other service-oriented articles of the same period indicated that the 2300 days had ended and that the holy place was again in its right condition. The enemy's vicious attempts to de desolate and destroy the holy place had failed completely. Indeed, the remaining holy ones on earth, along with their companions of the great crowd, had come off victorious and the sanctuary in its rightful theocratic state now continues to render sacred service to Jehovah. The Anglo-American world power still holds its position, but it will be without hand that he will be broken, said the angel Gabriel in Daniel 8.25. Very soon this seventh world power of Bible prophecy, this king fierce in countenance, will be broken, not by human hands, but by superhuman power at Armageddon. How thrilling it is to know that the sovereignty of Jehovah God, the Prince of, Pin Prince of Princes, will then be vindicated. So you're hit right away with the, the certainty yeah. of their interpretation now. The 2300 days must be associated with that war. But in previous publication, the dates were 1926 to 1932, but now they must be 1938 to 1944. And why? Well, Ray more than hinted at it in his analysis of the 1958 interpretation, and your will be done by saying that, well, this right condition that they say happened in 1932 was basically Joe Rutherford stepping on the remnants of Russellism that is, he's stamping out Russellism, he's got rid of Russell's publications, and I'm apparently the most of the Russellites mm -hmm. have already left, either voluntarily, have been forced out. Mm -hmm. And this move on the elders, getting rid of the not just the elective elders, but the whole elder arrangement, mm -hmm. was bringing the holy place, that is God's organization, into its right condition. But of course that's not going to... It's That's not going to wash. It's not going to work anymore. After because, 1972. Yeah, because they change it. Forty years later, they change that. So it can't be the fulfillment. Now you have to have a new fulfillment. So you can see the arbitrariness of all of this and the mm -hmm. picking of dates that correspond to watched our articles. And events. like, And the events are always like conventions and announcements that nobody knows or remembers. Well, of course... This can only wash where you're completely convinced that everything in the Bible, specifically Daniel, is the latter you. part, and Revelation, is about you. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, in past generations, right up until really, really about Russell's time, World War I, there was some, as we said in the prior video, some consensus in Christendom in the official interpretations that, yes, indeed, the church is prophesied here, but the martyrdoms, that's the part that gets me the <laughs> gets me at the deepest level now is how I could have ever accepted these interpretations when I knew, at least at some level, that the Daniel prophecy, let's say the twenty three hundred days, was mm -hmm. about a period of martyrdom in the Old Testament period, or actually after it, the, the so called Maccabean era when Jews were dying. Mm -hmm. Dying for their faith in, in resisting Antiochus the fourth who was kind of the model or the shadow of the Antichrist this is what Daniel 8 is about and also Daniel 11 and 12 and Revelation the same thing you're talking about a period of martyrdom in the church where people die yes yeah, so Daniel you know either is about 
or written in the period of Antiochus, but depending on who you who you let be your interpreter. But it's about the period of the Maccabeans, so it's about the period about 165 B.C. A period of really serious opposition in, mm-hmm. involving martyrs. And the Book of Revelation is rooted firmly in the first century, when the first great persecution broke out against the church around the year 95. So the fact that we can make it about us is, mm. is, is well, it's another example of Joe's megalomania. I mean, even, you know, you'd think it would kind of stick in your throat when you're reading an article from 1944 saying, organized for final work. <laughs> That's 76 years ago, three generations have passed, and the final work is not final. Even at the time, the, they hadn't done much in the way of international witnessing until after the war. Mm-hmm. So it is doubly ironic that they pick on the Anglo-American world powers, the great enemy of God, when it's in those nations, in the English-speaking world, where the freedoms were developed by the sacrifices yeah. of the Puritans and the Methodists, John Wesley, etc., who had bought our freedoms to uh, <laughs> make it easy for people like Joe and Joe Smith to make cults. Yeah. So where were the martyrdoms these, happening? These if, are if the witnesses had, attempts to desolate, I suppose. Yeah, well, you got that phrase back in, what is it, paragraph 25. Yeah. Witnesses were fiercely persecuted in the lands of the Anglo-American dual power. How many martyrs were there? The witnesses did have martyrs, let's not forget yeah, that. But, but they were not in the, generally, they were not in the, in the English-speaking lands. They were in the Axis powers, specifically Germany. Mm-hmm. So, so these these were viewed as as the the enemy of the places that you're saying persecuted you. And all you can say to get around the fact that their blindness, even about their own true enemies, is mm-hmm. is so total is this is just the way they've interpreted the Anglo-American world power. Going right back to Job, yeah. who apparently got a a hate on for not just Catholics but all the other clergy at that time when the the leaders in Brooklyn after Russell's death were thrown into jail for mm. what, what amounts to less than yeah, that's a year. Not, that's not persecution or martyrdom. No. It was more so, like a vacation. So again, this subjective, the thrusting of yourself into the prophetic picture, which does mm-hmm. violence to the text. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I guess what we've got to do as a kind of an antidote, if we're ex-witnesses, to get past our hate of the clergy and get our get past our our unbalanced things. view of, of even governments, our own mm-hmm. governments of that, yeah. is see the options, because there are options. It, in, it's among the sound Bible interpreters, there are options. For instance, mm-hmm. we're going to put a link on your screen to Michael Gorman in one of the videos we did from that book that rocked you so much and gave you yeah. some some other angle on the book of Revelation, which was reading Revelation responsibly, Michael mm-hmm. Gorman's book. We'll mm-hmm. put a link to that, and also to one we did on the contextual understanding of the 2300 days of Daniel in our Daniel playlist. So we'll put those on the screen now, mm-hmm. and get back to the text of Ray Franz next time. <laughs>